important it is to, to come back to our first love, you know. And I find, found myself weeping and crying, you know, and, and and then after that, I, you know, it was like this, this exciting joy came over me. I'm thinking, I said, God, I haven't had a, I haven't spent a time like this with you in a long time, you know. Mm -hmm. So then I went back to the car and I started reading the word. Mm -hmm. And out of nowhere, it just came into my thoughts. It needed me. And I'm thinking, I said, Lord, what is this? And it's like the Lord was saying, there's a shifting taking place Amen. in the spiritual yes, realm. There he's, is. He's, he's beginning to shake Satan's territory more than he has ever shaken his territory. And then when I got home, I said, Lord, there's, I said, Lord, when you do do something, it's huge. It's mm -hmm. big. So he's only, I know you only shared with me a little bit, God. And then it, then it, the Lord put into my thoughts again something. And he put in my thoughts that, that men, men, men need oh, to be very careful Jeremy's because here. the Jezebel spirit spirit is going to be on the increase and rise and it's going to be attacking the men their yeah. thoughts their decision making and the lord is saying that men need to come and seek god and ask god to help them and be with them more than they have they ever have and when you see a jezebel spirit how 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 does it affect you well it could it, it hey jeremy it, it's what well, the jezebel spirit is, is like a seducing spirit it, it, it can be very 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 seducing where where it just it just sneaks in and, and and before you know it you know if if you're not being close to the Lord mm -hmm. and, and if you're not and if you're not living by God's commands Amen. then you slowly start slipping into this area where you you may not be aware of what's going on because because what is happening is it's pleasing your own selfish desires. Mm -hmm. Right. You're leaning up your own selfish desires and your own fleshly ways. As the Lord says, He's supposed to increase and we're supposed to decrease. Mm -hmm. But a lot of us, we want to increase <laughs> and set God on the side when we need help or something or in yeah. trouble or something mm -hmm. and turn to God. Yeah. See, it's almost the opposite. So the Lord said, This is a season where we need to seek Him. Come oh, before him more than we ever had. More we ever you know, and, and it's really important. Jeremy, give a word of testimony, man. Get out, you're Matt. Come on, I haven't seen you for a while. I know you. What's on your heart, Jeremy? I know you. You get up. You keep getting back up. Praise God! It's good to see you up again. <laughs> My goodness, have I been through it? I uh, yeah, I'll give a testimony. Yeah, go ahead. We God is uh, God so faithful. Even when I'm unfaithful. Amen. Amen. And that's the biggest thing for me that I've learned in the last couple of years is that, uh, <clears throat> you know, the Bible says that he is the author and, and the perfecter yeah. or the finisher of our faith. Amen. And I'm learning that God doesn't start things without finishing them. That's, that's right. right. That's right. And so, There's a verse was, in Psalm 138, I think it says, He'll perfect all that concerns you. I mean, it really goes wrong with the Philippians one, you know, that yeah, it, it, you know, know, Hebrews one. There's, there's a, you know, we can know things. We can know things in here, you know, intellectually. Right, but is it in here? Is it changing then, our life? Yeah. Or we can know them because there's experience behind it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm learning is that, you know, I know intellectually that God is going to finish things, but do I really believe that? Am I walking that out? Am I seeing that happen well, in my own see, life? Amen. You know, two years ago, my dad died. Mm -hmm. My wife mm -hmm. took off, cheated on me, divorced me. And then my stepdad died. And then on top of that, I was kicked out of my church. And so I went back to my Egypt, which was methamphetamine. I went back to using because I was I was wounded. I was hurt, you know. And so I, I was going out to the streets to help somebody that I loved. And when I spoke with the Lord about my mistake, he said, Jeremy, he goes, I, I'm not mad at you because you used he said, I'm not mad at you because you were going out to help your best friend. You just didn't use wisdom. He said, your heart, you have a heart of gold. You want to help people. You just didn't use wisdom. You should have had accountability and all these things. Because in that season of my life, I was hurting bad. And so uh, in that time, I was hospitalized four or five times um, for having uh, paranoid delusions. And I remember the nurses saying one time I called my family and told them to get out of their house, that people were coming to kill them, people were coming to kill me. Um, hospitals, uh, ambulances picking me up. You know, I thought everybody was out to get me. And so, Is that from the meth? Yeah. 
Yep, and so uh, I went running across the field in Marysville and told the espresso lady I was having a heart attack, and she called the paramedics, and <laughs> they came to got came to get me and uh, took me to the hospital. I remember hearing the nurse say, you know, paranoid schizophrenics are the worst. I hate, and I'm like, who, who am I becoming? You know, it's just insane. They hospitalized me, went home, fell again, hospitalized me, went home, fell again, and uh, this last relapse, I ate enough meth to make the left side of my head go numb. I had a mini stroke and I ended up in the back of a Walgreens where the police had to come pull me out and it felt like my face the was one right melting. Is that the one on Smoky Point? No, I was out I was out in Renton somewhere. Right. Okay. They took me to Valley General, my face was melting. Yeah, I was just I was hurting and uh, they discharged me from there and I was with a girl and she had made up another needle full of drugs and I shot it up and I hit a nerve which made all three of these fingers go numb in my hand and uh, I rem all I remember is the room opening up really wide like it expanded all of a sudden I'm looking around going I'm in big trouble here and so I ended up waking up in a taco time bathroom with the police they were stepping on my neck and my arms trying to see if I was alive they called the medical examiner down there because they didn't know if I was going to die or not and so the police were shoving their thumbs into my neck and trying to get me to open my eyes. Took me to the hospital, tried to uh, keep me alive. I was having anxiety attacks, almost having a heart attack. I was railing a heart attack. They were giving me out of van to bring my heart rate down. And so, you know, through all that, <laughs> the Lord still brought me out. Mm -hmm. And I'm a breathing, living, God-fearing, loving person still today even more and here's the thing that i've learned you know jesus said the kingdom of god is at hand the kingdom of god is at hand and this is what i know to be different in my life today is before as a christian when i would approach god i would approach god by making a sacrifice and washing my hands and making sure i was clean and then you know going and through all these Ceremonial, rituals, yeah, yeah. rituals, lighting the candles, making the make prayers. Sure, the big, just to make sure you're worthy enough to come, right? Exactly. Yeah. Eating the soap, doing all the things, and then moving a two-foot heavy curtain just to come into the presence of God. And when I had a revelation that the kingdom of God is at hand, and I can move right into that right presence into anytime Amen. that I want, because it says in the Word that I can boldly approach the throne, throne of grace. Right. I can come to Him. I don't have to fearfully approach it. I don't have to reverently approach it. I can boldly approach it because what Jesus Christ did on the cross was enough. I don't have to fall back into that old way of doing things. My mindset doesn't have to be, I have to do all these things for God to love me. My righteousness was paid for. It's a free gift. All that using, everything that I did, that was already covered by the blood 2,000 years ago. And I can still approach God. Boldly. Amen, bro. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Jeremy, how long ago was this that you had your last uh, big event? Three months ago. Three months. Three and a half months. Yeah. I got sent down to Arizona to work the LA Dodgers spring training through the discipleship I was a part of, and they kicked me out. And so I was wandering around in the desert. And they kicked I, you out down there? Yep, they kicked me out. Because? Well, I was a part of a Baptist. It was just for certain reasons, you know. I wasn't allowed to speak in tongues. I wasn't allowed to prophesy. Well, you know, and you know me. And so is that the, from Alma? The one from Alma? <laughs> yeah. They don't believe in this thing like three months ago. It was pretty. Alma doesn't believe in speaking in tongues. No, you're a false prophet if you miss it just by a little. You bit. You know, I've actually spoken down there. You know, and so no Stuart Lawson is going on. Did you yeah. ever know David Wade that led worship down I know there? Pastor David, yeah. Well, David, he, he sang at my way. Well, he came down and told me you were praying for me. So yeah, and so yeah, because but, I've known David for. 35 years, 40 years. Right. I knew. I met him in 1982 when all my brothers and sisters got saved. In 82 down here at Des Moines mm -hmm. Marina <coughs> at a retreat is when I met him in 1982. Yeah, I like wow. David Wade a lot. They kicked me out in Arizona and, and my Bible flipped open. I was wearing all black and I'm walking through the desert. My Bible flipped open and it was talking about the wilderness, how it would be a place of supernatural provision. And uh, people were giving me money, people were giving me water, people bought me a bus ticket, the bus was full, I couldn't get on it, so I started walking, and I walked by this church where this Mexican guy was putting a sticker on his truck, and this is the funniest thing, because I thought the, the cartels were out to kill me three months before, <laughs> and so God kept putting these Mexican people in my, in my path, and so the first one brought me the Greyhound, I had to jump in the back of his truck, and he was afraid of me, he didn't want to let me in the cabin, I was terrified of him. 
And so they drove me to the Greyhound station. From there, they had no room for me. I'm walking down the street randomly, and this Mexican guy's out there, and he invited me over and fed me and prayed with me, drove me all the way to Mesa, and got me on an airplane out of there. And so it's been amazing. Uh, the Lord's already given me four or five confirmations that I'm supposed to go back down there open my business. Since I've been back, we've hired three people, and we've tripled in our business. I opened a reopened my drywall company and God is just blessing. Mm. And I think it has to do with the mindset change. That oh, yes. God, I'm, I'm undeserving, but it doesn't matter because you paid for it. You paid for it. He loves me no matter what. No matter whether my wife loves me, my family, my friends. No matter whether they kick me out in Arizona or not, God still loves me. See there, Mike? So, confirmation. Yeah, I see. Confirmation. See, Jeremy, I love you, too. Confirmation. <laughs> I love you, too. That confirmation, Mike. Pastor Mike. Amen. Amen. Confirmation. Amen. Confirmation. Praise God. Well, that, that's that's yeah. exciting. You got a word there, Matt, at all? Your... Uh, I don't have a word right now, but I have some testimonies. Go ahead. Yeah, so this is just because we're called to be supernaturalists, you know, to bring Jesus and God's kingdom you know, wherever we go. So, me, because I'm a bodybuilder, so I spend a lot of time in the gym. Uh, but yeah, in the last week, three people have gotten healed and one person <coughs> saved just in between sets. So like I do a set, <laughs> see like a, see like a broken foot or something, pray, Holy Spirit, come heal. Like one guy. Bench press, I'm about to by pressing in, yeah, press get, under the kingdom. Yeah, the Samson anointing bench press 500 pounds. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, one guy, he had hurt his wrist. He got so healed that he took it off, moved it, and swore, took three steps back because he got completely healed within wow. like two seconds. Nice. Yeah, and then two minutes later, he gave his life to Christ. Oh, yeah, yeah. and then I, went, wow. then, awesome. then, then I went back to my set, and he went back to his <laughs> set. And, but it's casual, you know? It's like sometimes you have this mindset, you're like, oh, I gotta pray, and I gotta fast, I gotta, like, no, just be, you know? Just be in his presence. Just have your antenna tuned up. Uh, Matt, for for the opportunities yeah, that God gives you every you single your day. So, so so it's it's being in tune to what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do, right? Yeah. Being obedient to the Holy Spirit. Because when I when I'm walking, I literally I saw his wrist and it was like jumping out, and I knew he was gonna get healed. So I didn't have any fears. I didn't have any like I started talking to him, and I was like, I was like, God's gonna heal you. And I started talking. Mm -hmm. So sure enough, you know, it's just easy. You know, you just listen and then do, and God does the rest. That's right. Amen. But it's crazy, you know, because sometimes you have these, like, mental battles. You're like, I don't know. Like, God, yeah. if you really want me to yeah. pray, yeah. have him, like, exactly. twitch his eye three times and, like, yeah. spin yeah. around, yeah. you know. Confirmation. Yeah. Confirmation. It's kind of funny here. I know some, sometimes you go into this me or God. I, I was sharing last Sunday as I was at a church, and, and the Lord said, someone here is going to give you an offering. We're talking about this last night. Someone's going to already give you some money, and I thought, well, I didn't know anybody. I knew a couple people there, you know. But uh, I thought, well, man, is this really? You know, sometimes you're going, is this me or God? You know, anybody, anybody ever do that? Or just me. But the time I left the church, but the, I was just getting ready to walk out the door when somebody handed me a check. You know, she said, "This has been burning my purse. I got to give this to you." I said, "Oh, okay." And I said, "You know, the Lord told me someone's going to do that." But I, I said, "But I was getting ready to walk out." I said, "I ain't going to make it happen." You know, if it's God, it's God. If it's you, it's it's you. And earlier I was praying tonight. I just sense, you know, I just feel the Lord says He want He want me to open the portals of this room tonight. You know, you know, yeah, you I, said I it right. And I did I say it right? <laughs> yeah, I better I better say it wrong. Uh, and uh, I really feel, you know, that I believe the days are coming. You know, we've had Steve Hampton here sometimes, and all of a sudden Steve Hampton's taken somewhere else to minister, and he's back here. But I believe the days are coming, even these hours, where I wouldn't be surprised if we're worshiping God and. You know, Sadar, Saduza walks in, or, or Neville Johnson, or people that we know. Or, or, but I believe you're going to see more and more where people will be coming to your meetings. The God's just going to bring them there in the Spirit. Because, you know, Paul says, I was with you in spirit, join and behold your order. You know, and so there's many testimonies of people just showing up in meetings, or angels, or people. And I believe the Lord says, He, he just wants me to declare that over this house tonight, that, that, th that people begin to, the, the, the great cloud of witnesses, in heaven and on earth would begin to show up. It says in you know Ephesians three five that the family in heaven and earth, and I believe more and more as we just have belief in the Lord, the, the ridiculous is going to happen, 
You know, and I can't wait till God just sends me to another church where I'm sitting here in my prayer couch all of a sudden, whoa, how did I get here, you know, and like here I am. But, you know, God wants us to begin to expect things that are not of this realm. That's right. right. You know, when Jesus is walking through the walls, and, 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 and we, we've heard so many testimonies in this house of people being translated and taken. I know we've heard probably hundreds of them over the last 20 years, or at least 100 of them. But, you know, God just, but God just wants to, us to expect because my kingdom is not of this realm. That's right. If I could do it, it wouldn't be a God. If I could do it, you know, I, I could be a Rotary's Club or a Lions Club. But when God shows up on the scene, He gets the glory and He yeah. gets the word again. Yeah. And I'm just asking, I'm just asking God, you begin to step in uh, off the throne and begin to do the supernatural things that God, that only God can do. Yes. Because I, I just know that we have a supernatural God in this hour. Yes. And uh, even as we come to a time of worship, some of you have burdens in your hearts. You say, God, I want to believe that the anointing breaks the yoke. Yes. You know, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, the oil of joy for gladness. You know, I, I don't believe Jesus was ever depressed because he was anointed with the oil of gladness above his fellows. You know, yes. there was joy unspeakable. You know, I know going to the cross was a difficult thing. Father, apostle, let this cup pass from me. But I believe most of heart, if he wasn't interceding and travailing for the church, he was full of joy. Amen. Full of joy. Amen. And there was times you've probably been weeping and travailing because he was our great intercessor. But <laughs> I believe when he was amongst the people or in the public and <laughs> center's house, they go, this guy's got great joy. He's got great peace. I just want to be around him. Woo! I can feel it just coming off of him onto me because yes. he was so full of the Holy Ghost without measure. Yes. And, you know, and God, he just invited you and I to come and worship and, and say, God, we want to come in and be a part of that church without measure how many believe just believe god he Amen. wants to do Praise that god. he just Amen. wants he Amen. just wants to be a, yes. a church without measure you know i mean you know i i just love listening to certain people i was listening to neville here the other day and he says i was just sitting there in my house and moses walks in here comes moses walking in and moses says here's the blueprints for your buildings for you. god says i want you to start the the, the uh the light ministry which goes all over the world and moses came in with the blueprints how god wanted him to build on his property because man there it is and god laid how many know there's gonna be blueprints from heaven and messengers from heaven and, and god just wants us to begin to say lord you know, as days get worse and darker, whatever is going to go on out there, I just believe it's going to get gooder and gooder for the church, more exciting yeah, for yes, the church. Yes, and right, and yes. it's going to get wonderful because because our God is about to show off and show up, and, and, and His name is about to be made known among His enemies. Amen. And don't be surprised if, if in these days I head out these blood moons and people are starting to get translated into Obama's office and Senator's office. <laughs> They'll be praying and they're going to confront the leaders. But I believe there's, be, there's going to be some confrontation yep. of people, not only going to confront them just naturally, but some would be translated into their offices, into their into the personage. You know, God is going to, God is on the throne. Amen. Amen. And, and there's Amen. nothing that's going to happen without God not letting it happen. But at the same time, He has given you and I all authority in heaven and earth. Amen. And so we got to be such an... This is an hour... I don't know what I'm talking about. But this is an hour that God wants us to be in such intimacy and relationship yes. with Him. Yes, that, yes Lord. Oh, and, and, uh, and one man I was listening to, the Lord came to him, and, and he, shows him the, he shows him this, he, this, he takes him to this gate, and it's locked up. And Jesus takes his key out of the gate and he unlocks the gate. And the Lord says to him, he says, you can come into my garden. If I can be a part of your garden. But you know, you don't want to bring Jesus into your garden if you got a lot of garbage in your heart. You know, he says, Lord, let me get the weeds and some of the... Not that we have to work our way, but you know, as, as Jeremy was saying, but God wants to come and have fellowship with us. Yes. Way more than we want to come and have fellowship with Him. Yes. And so you just get ready because he says, come yes. and dine with me. Come yes. and, I'm not standing on the door. I'm knocking. If anyone open their heart. He says, man, I want to come and have fellowship, man. I want to come and pig out. I want to come and dine. 
I want to. I just want to come and hang out with you, put my arms around you. Yes. You know, and, I mean, God wants to begin to do that where it's going to transform your life because yes. Jesus is going to be the time where He says, "I'm about to be your best friend." Yes, Amen. I'm Amen. about to be your best friend. Amen. Jesus and the Father are going to be your lovers like you've never seen before. And how many? I, I, I says that's what I want, God. You begin to come in and be that lover of my soul that I've never seen before. And so as we begin to worship. To say, Jesus, you just come and, and walk among yes. us. Great cloud of witnesses, we just invite you to yes. come. You know, a heaven and earth connection. The veil between heaven and earth is getting thinner and thinner. And we, and I just believe we need to expect that and begin to yes. see that. And, and, and it's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen. It's, it's, already, it's already happened with some of the people in this house where they're in two places at one time while they're ministering. And so things are going to happen radically. And... and uh, and, and you know, the Lord just wants us to get out of the old the box. Yes. The, the, this oh, box oh, that keeps yeah. you. And I says, God, get out of that box. You, I do above and beyond all, all you could imagine or think. I don't even know how anybody can get a box big enough to put them in. You know, but, but they do. Like, some got these little tiny boxes. They cram God into them. Like he can't even get out. You know, and he says, God says, I got to go somewhere else where I can, where I can be God. You know, because I tell you what, God rarely moves apart from our faith. He's sovereign and he does apart from our faith because he's sovereign like Paul, Paul on the road to Damascus but I believe that was because Stephen was praying for him Father forgive him he knows not what he does and that remittance just loose solid yeah. the gospel the next chapter Yeah. and so but God's about to do good things right Jerry Amen. Uh, so let's Amen. just if you want to stand there yeah, I'm just going to put on some Hallelujah. music here I think it, I'll sit here I'll get back here in a second I had to get some new chords this week so I can keep it working <laughs> You want to stand up, walk around, you know, just be free to be who you want to be. You are our 